Hickok 45 with another classic Smith & Wesson. No, not the classic series, a real classic made in the 1970s. We're going to shoot it and talk about it, maybe even sight it in. I don't want to hide it. We, uh, yeah, this is chapter two, but as I kind of hinted there, this also is my gun. The first one was not. I, yeah, I probably talked about that in the first video. I'm, I'm so sorry I traded off all my Model 27s back in the 70s and 80s because I had some of these. And uh, I will link to the first video, and I highly recommend you watch it. I actually watched most of it uh, knowing I was going to do this. And actually, uh, I covered pretty much everything in it. So why are we even here? <laughs> well, because I want to shoot it again. I, want, I got one I want to shoot. Hey, I got a couple other guns just out here to compare, like the flintlock. We want to do an uh, in-depth comparison between the classic Smith & Wesson and the flintlock. Don't you think that would be wise? Yeah. I have been known to waste time in videos, but not that much. We are now we're doing some other things with that. You'll see it later. So this is the 27, and one reason I haven't fired it, you know, sometimes I'll shoot a little bit as we open up, but I don't think it's been fired. You know, I mean, you look at that forcing cone. It's been messed with. It's made in 1978, so, you know, it's not in perfect shape because it's been handled and, you know, stored and knocked around a little bit maybe, but it's in really good shape. But I don't think it's been fired at all. It doesn't even appear to be test fired, but it has been handled. So what I thought of what we did, I think we've done this once or twice over the 12 years, is I'm just going to show you what I do because I was going to bring it out. Really, it was just I, I meant to bring it out and take some shots and sight it in earlier, really. Uh, I've had it for a couple of months, I guess. Just haven't done it. And I thought, you know what, let's just do it in a video, okay? So this may not be a video if this thing doesn't shoot, all right? Or it shoots four feet to the left and there's nothing I can do about it by adjusting sights or something it's so far off uh, and so if that is the case you're not really watching me right now i'm just sort of talking to the breeze right but what i would do i'll just show you and and if i don't get it on you know down to where i can light matches with it if you know what that means okay or uh shoot the eyes out of a flea at 100 yards yeah you know, as long as i can get it on pretty close uh for today that's fine because i'm just going to shoot a little bit uh we talked about all the history of the uh, model 27 how it came about in 1935 and it was oh the catch me out at the time wow a magnum registered magnum they called it and they were special order you could order them in almost any barrel length and different finishes even and that it was a big big deal in 1935 this was the most powerful handgun at least production handgun i guess made at the time and it was uh, carried by the fbi up in what well, through the 40s and the uh up through the 50s and 60s even the three and a half inch model it was carried by a lot of fbi agents it was carried by Patton, world war ii he had a three and a half inch model it was nickel plated and he had ivory grips on it. John and I have seen it. I told you about that in the first video. Uh, so it's just a cool gun, powerful, okay? And it feels good, and guess what? The most important thing, it looks good. It? So what I want to do, I'll put some plus P through it, 38 Special, and let's just see where it hits, okay? Th this, I predict, will not be a major sighting in problem or anything. Uh, my guess is that the elevation might be a little off and I've got my screwdrivers out here and I will uh, you know, work on it however much I need to, okay? And before we take those shots, let me direct your attention over that cool stack of Silver Eagles from Atmex. <laughs> One of our supporters that we really cherish and uh, check out the link in the description to uh, atmex.com and also the, the favorites page, Chicago 45 favorites page. So a lot of cool stuff there, coins and all kinds of coins. So we appreciate their help. Uh, and with that said, I'm gonna play with this precious metal and see where it is. Now what I normally do, now again, I'm not necessarily teaching you what to do, how to sight in a handgun. I just, uh, as with most things, I'll just show you what I do, all right? So here's what I would have done. If you had not been here, all right? So I will do the same thing since you're here. I'll come out and I'll take, oh, look at that pumpkin. It's a pothead. 
what I would do is I'll come out and I'll just pick out a, uh, I got paper today so I can use that, but I'll, uh, I'll just pick out a target and because I can tell where you hit, as you know, I'm going to hold it in the middle of that stop sign and just to get an idea. If it's way off, I need a big target, don't I? All right. I need to get a good let off here. Now, once I got a hit, now that seemed okay. I it might have I might have pulled a little bit down down on it. Uh, so once I get a hit, then I'll use that for my uh, target to sight on. So now I'm just going to try to hit that hit. Now at least I'm going to level up on it. I don't care where I hit it, but it'll tell me where I'm going if I level up the sights on it. All right, went underneath it, didn't I? I'm going I'm to level up on the same hit, the first hit. Okay, and I think I hit the second hit again. So, so what have I learned? I've learned at that distance, it might shoot just a little bit low. I'm going to put one on the cowboy. Uh, well, let's put one on that little plate to the left of the cowboy. I'm going to sort of hold right in the middle of it. I would expect it to go a little low from what I've seen so far. Okay, I'm holding on that hit. Okay, you know what? It may not shoot low. It just occurred to me. Because see, when you're sighting in something, you gotta think a little bit. It's hard to do for me. But you know, this sight of the bore axis, it has kind of a higher bore axis with this tall sight, maybe. And uh, you know, from the actual bore. And so at this close range of that stop sign, it might just naturally, like when you're sighting in an AR-15, I do that sometimes, I'll shoot paper here, the first ray of targets, and it, it's gotta be about that low for it to hit right on over there at like 80 yards. So we may have that going on, okay. So the windage doesn't seem like it's horrible or anything. I'll take a few more. So, and meanwhile, I'm having fun shooting it, see? <laughs> and of course, I'm shooting 38 Special first. It's, you know, you gotta watch doing that too much because you get the cylinders dirty, chambers dirty, and they have trouble chambering a 357 Magnum sometimes. Uh, so, and then also you gotta decide what round you're gonna shoot. So I'm just getting a, an idea now. So I, uh, like I said, I've had this couple of months. Beautiful, beautiful revolver. It's the same revolver that you're looking at with this uh, Model 29, Dirty Harry model, really, except it's in 357 Magnum. They're both big end frame revolvers, same grips. Everything is the same. They're both made in the 70s. They're, this is a 27-2. The difference mainly, of course, is the chambering. They get smaller holes for the bullets, right? In the barrel and the cylinder. And then uh, in the barrel, you know, it's a 44 versus 38, basically. And uh, and this one stays thick all the way out. This one is contoured downward a little bit. All right. Uh, cowboy. Right in the middle of him. Ooh, low left. Huh? Okay, that's where I was trying to hit. Let's try a two liter. And let's try it again with a blank. Yeah, I thought I was empty. <laughs> okay. It's got a pretty nice trigger. I've had a little better on uh, on Smiths before. Let's go ahead and put some Magnums in. Okay, that was the thing. These big end frames. Uh, it was made for the 357 Magnum. Even though subsequently all the revolvers were like seemed to be smaller than this, and uh, models of 19, the six, all these that were chambered 357, they didn't have to be as big. Uh, and you didn't necessarily want to shoot a full diet of Magnum ammo in them. But this one, theoretically, you could. It was made for them. Big old beefy revolver. No doubt about it. All right, so we'll shoot some Magnum, see where they hit. And that's one nice thing about the end frame. It's heavy, and so it helps absorb that recoil. I'm going to shoot right in the middle of the cowboy again. See where... Boom, that went a little higher. That might have been me, though. And that went right in the middle. Yeah. Let's go over there and hold on that buffalo. What the heck? We'll just go ahead and reach out.
Boom! Let's try that ram. Alright. Got one more round. Let's wake up the gong. No, let's hit that red plate on the left since the sun is shining on it, just begging for me to shoot it. Nature is telling me, shoot me, shoot me. Boom, I see it rocking. Okay, <laughs> big old magnums. Those federal just range ammo, soft point jacketed, but I mean, they're, they're pretty hot, as you know. I've talked about that before. So, uh, you know, I was thinking I was going to have to go ahead and do a little adjustment on the sight. You don't want to get in a hurry adjusting your sights. Uh, you know, there's nothing to lose. I can shoot. I may let me touch them today. If it were, if it had been shooting low, like on that stop sign, I, I was, you know, early on, it looked like, like it might be. What would I have done with my rear sight? No quiz for you folks. You've been around a while. Okay. Good answer, Joe. Good answer. Glad you put your pizza down and type that in. If you just raise the rear sight, okay? And then that way, as I uh, instruct you in our sight adjustment video, then it would uh, bring the sight in alignment on that lower hit, and that's where you want it to be, okay? All right, so, yeah, and, and again, uh, I'll link to the first one. So check it out, definitely. Uh, all the history of this, you know, Elmer Keith, I talk about, you know, Patton and various things, some of the things I mentioned here today. This was really a big deal, this gun was. It's still neat, and they're beautiful, just beautiful firearms. And you know, thinking before the video, you know, these are big old guns. And you know, uh, I've been carrying around a P365 SIG today, and I think of the difference, you know, wow. You know, I got 10 rounds of hot nine millimeter, you know, and you could even carry a 40 or a 10 millimeter if you want to, in pretty small package. And these big monstrosities, these hold six, and it's a big old in-frame, you know, revolver. You know, it's like, man, that thing is a, it's a dinosaur. It's an obsolete firearm. It's really not. They're fun to shoot. They're just fun. And they have their applications for hunting and home defense or whatever. You might want to carry it. You know, you might need to carry it, depending on where you are. <laughs> what you need to protect yourself from. And then also, I was thinking back in the 70s, you know, well, the 30s. When this was, came, it came out in the 30s. And, and well, the whole... 20th century uh, most of it and then when I was into these things uh, for the first time in the 70s and collecting and shooting and everything these guns and the manufacturer the design and everything they weren't thinking about concealed carry civilians why not because that didn't really come about until like the 90s okay so Smith & Wesson is designing these firearms for maybe uh, law enforcement maybe military military uh, hunting, right? Handguns and different things, home defense or whatever. But they're not really thinking. It's not foremost on their mind. Ooh, this be a, see, what can we do to make this a better carry gun for civilians? You know, how to go into a concealment holster and that sort of thing. They were carried. Uh, their only thinking generally was uh, law enforcement carrying in a big duty belt outside. You know, uh, uh, open carry. Trying to say. Yeah. So, so it's a different world. But man, these are beautiful. I think Smith makes a, a remake of this. The remakes are neat. I'm glad they're doing it, but they're just not quite the same. All right, let's shoot that pothead. How about that? Let's shoot that pothead. And I'm going to take out that two liter down there while I do it, while I smoke some pot. What did I tell you? <laughs> yeah, you pothead. Dang. Boom. A couple holes in that guy. <laughs> We've already done a pumpkin carving. I hope you've seen it for this year. But uh, he's got a couple of eyes. That's not bad. That magnum made some holes, didn't it? That's one reason when we do the pumpkin carving each year. Uh, we can't use just any cartridge. It just does too much, you know, uh, quite often. So, in keeping again, well, let's just shoot something a little different. How about some of these heavy 180 grain rounds? 357. Great that Federal loads those, because that's that's a heavy bullet for a 357, 180 grains. So it would be perfect for knocking something over over there if I can hit it, right? If I can hit it. The old 27, yeah, I uh, I I just uh, miss having one. 
and just had to trade back into one. I mean, I'm sorry, I apologize, but I missed it all these years. I haven't had one, owned one, and oh my gosh, I don't know, 20, 30 years. Let's go there and see if these will knock anything over. Uh, we've got a ram over there on the right. I can't see him too well, but maybe I can hit him. Yeah, so enough weight. And that pig up there on the left. Boy, it rolled him over, didn't it? Sorry, be assigning him gender, but let's try the gong. Yep, you can hear that. And we've got some things right here that need to be hit close by. I've got a soft drink here. That bird is trying to drink. Sorry, guy. Put him out of business. <laughs> Let's do a double action on that blue two liter. He got a bowling pin at the same time. <laughs> all right, we'll shoot six more and let you go. All right. So uh, model 27 was the 357 Magnum. It was called a, a registered Magnum when it first came out. And uh, and uh, I always, when it was later, it was like the late 30s, I think, before they started calling it uh, 357 Magnum. And uh, just a nice gun. They still make this frame, you know, what the, they make a 327 Scandium frame. Holds like eight rounds, I think. I don't know if that's the one that holds eight. They make it, what's that? We did a video on that R. R88 or something, I forget the model number that they make that's a really, really nice version of this. It's just a modern version of it. it holds eight rounds. So it's never died. The, the, the 627, they, they make they make eight round models of this thing. You know, because now with a metallurgy, they can just do that and get more rounds in it. So pretty cool. And of course, and, and then I think I pointed out in another video, in 1954, they came out with kind of the uh, Highway Patrolman version of it. And you still see those. They have a. They don't have quite the finish. They're not as pretty as these. They were more of a tool, a working tool. And you see that checkering on the top strap. That's that's really neat. That's one of the characteristics. The old Model 27. These were just one of the the prettiest guns. And even when I'm firing those Magnums, you know what? They don't knock me around much. So uh, that's something to think about. If it, when you're picking out a ranged gun or any kind of firearm, if it's not something you're going to be carrying. Well, some people like to carry four-pound guns, but if you're not carrying it, it is mainly for the range. Hey, you know, it's just so much uh, sweeter to shoot. You can really handle that recoil so much better. All right, let's smoke this pot and let you go. Boom. All right, smoke a little more. <laughs> and those two liters, we can't, we can't leave them standing. Whoa. Let's pop those guys. And let's finish up on the gong. Did I miss? Give me one more bullet. One more bullet. All right, one more. <laughs> All right, can't quit on a miss. Okay. Well, you know, I think the sights are in pretty good shape on this, actually. So uh, what I expected was to just have to do a little bit of tweaking. My screwdriver and wouldn't have been a big deal. Even if we had to go left and right, you know, we could have done that without any trouble. Okay, so... Uh, you know, these Smith & Wessons, especially the old ones, they just seem to come ready to go. Great triggers, and the sight's pretty much on, unless somebody's done some cranking on them. So, again, one of the big end frames, one of the big classic end frames, uh, and uh, quite a lot of history with it. Uh, check out that first video. I go into a lot of that. And I don't know about you, but it's just, just pretty. This and, you know, the Python couple of the most gorgeous 357 magnums on the planet i hope you know that so it's hard to beat a good old classic smith and wesson uh, lots of fun glad you came out today we appreciate you all supporting everybody that supports us and watching our crazy videos we really do so uh, we'll see you on the range later and uh, expect you to be here life is good 
Oh yeah, that's better. This is a great gun for defense. Oh hey, didn't see you guys there. Uh, while I've got you here, I want to remind you of our friends over at Talon Grips and Ballastall. Talon Grips makes uh, grips, can you believe it? Uh, for all different types of firearms. You can get rough texture or more of a rubberized texture. Uh, it just sticks right on there. You know, really affordable, really cool option to in, improve the grip for your handguns um, or, or rifles. Uh, so please check them out at TalonGunGrips.com. You'll be glad you did. And also Ballastol. Uh, Dad has been using Ballastol for many years. It's a cleaner and a lubricant, and it's non-toxic. Uh, it works really great, and we're happy to have them on board since it's been a part of our shooting endeavor for a very long time. So go to Ballastol.com, TalonGunGrips.com. And also, while you're out there, I'm juggling all these things here. Also, uh, while you're on the internet, please do check out our other social media like Hickok45 on Facebook. There's also Hickok45 on Twitter, the real Hickok45 on Instagram. There's a John underscore Hickok45 on Instagram where I do some things. There's Hickok45.com. Uh, you can find us also on GunStreamer. So check out all that stuff and then watch more videos.